Hi guys, so what we're gonna be talking about today is um, dialogue. So um, dialogue is something that you do every single day. It's when characters speak to each other, they're having a conversation or dialogue. So when you write dialogue, you need to use special punctuation marks called, called quotation marks. Some people shorten that to just quotes. Um, you see people do this, but I mean, so they're quoting something. So when you use quotation marks in dialogue, you use quotation marks to include a direct quotation, a person's exact words. So our team leader says, I tried to practice every day. So we say that our team leader isn't part of the dark quote. If you were reading a story or if somebody was talking, they would be saying, introducing you to the character or what they're doing. And then says, you see a comma, and then I try to practice every day in quotes. Let's go home, Jean suggested. So Jean is the one speaking here. Jean is saying, let's go home. Let's go home goes in quotes, followed by a comma. Then it's a story, like you'll be writing in some narrative writings, Jean suggested, and then there's that period at the end. So the period won't go there. Now, direct quotations is something that we've also been talking about, especially when we cite text evidence. So a directly quoted sentence begins with a capital letter. Mrs. Talbot said, please get a pencil. So we see this part here, Miss Talbot said, comma, quotation mark, please get a pencil. So punctuation is something that we've really been stressing. So this capital P here is starting the quote. That means it needs to have a capital. Please get a pencil. This is now the ending of the sentence. So we see a period and then in, end in quotes there. Christina asked. So this is the person. She's not saying that. That's just saying that Christina is the one that is speaking. This is her dialogue. So then it goes to, is it my turn? So if Christina asked, that's kind of prompting you to your comma in quotes again, capital I, is it my turn? quotation at the end, and then you keep this question mark before the quotation mark. Now, a directly quoted sentence is set off from the rest of the sentence with commas, like we just talked about. So Mrs. Hayes said, please line up quietly. Kara asked, may I be line leader? So we can see that these are the people that it's lining us up for what they're about to say. When that intro is there, done, we have a comma then quotes, I see another capital P, please line up quietly, period, end of quote. Kara asked, may I be line leader, comma, we see quotes again, and then again, that capital M, may I be line leader, question mark, and then quotation mark there. So some things to think about when you're writing dialogue, obviously we know dialogue because you speak to somebody all the time, we have conversations, you watch dialogue on TV, you have it when you're on the phone or when you're texting, but when a phrase identifying the speaker interrupts a quoted sentence, the second part of the quotation begins with a lowercase letter. If it's a new sentence, it begins with a capital letter. So will you it's basically the sentence is broken apart throughout the dialogue so here are some examples will you take care of my lawn and pets asked mr franklin while i'm on vacation next month so will you take care of my lawn and pets we don't need to put the question mark yet because we have um it being introduced here in the second part of the quotation asked mr franklin comma while i'm on vacation is when he's finishing his thought, and then that's where the question mark will go in. I am happy to do it, replied Leo. Thank you for the opportunity. So I am happy to do it, exclamation point. That's one of Leo's thoughts, it's replied Leo. Then thank you for the opportunity. This is when the dialogue gets split. So if you notice, I'm happy to do it, exclamation point, and then we see our quotation marks here replied Leo is almost like another little sentence here in the split and a period. And then thank you for the opportunity in quotes again, exclamation point in between the quotation mark. So if a quoted sentence is divided, a comma usually follows the first part and comes before the second part. Oh, Donna commented because he's probably just saying that because he's never had a cat. 
Um, so we see here our O in both quotes, a comma, then Donna commented, comma, quotation mark. He's probably just saying that because he's never had a cat, period, quotation. Um, a quote at the beginning. So if a quotation mark comes at the beginning of a sentence, a comma, question mark, or exclamation point usually follows it. Dogs make better pets, pet, dogs make better pets than cats do, said Jared. So we see here um, that we're seeing this comma right here because said Jared is telling us who is saying the dialogue here. So we don't put the comma here. Um, sorry, we don't put a period here, we put a comma here because Jared is gonna be the one who's finishing the thought. Have you ever had a cat, Emily asked? Now, this is a question. So the question mark here is gonna come before the quotes, Emily asked. No, and I never will, he replied. So this is how we work with quotation marks. If a quotation mark comes at the beginning of a sentence, a comma, question mark, or exclamation point usually follows it, okay? So these are sentences where we see the quotes happening at the beginning, and this is ways that our punctuation would follow that word. If a quotation comes at the end of a sentence, a comma usually comes before it. So Tara asks, comma, what makes you say that? Then the question mark goes and then uh, the quotation marks in the outside. Punctuation inside quotes, a period or comma should always be placed inside the quotation marks. I can't wait to see Shirley Caesar's new video, James said, it's supposed to come out next week. So we see video, we see our quote, our comma right here after video. This is where we see this um, this break, James said, period. It's supposed to come out next week, period, inside the quotation mark. So there's an exception to this rule that I just thought, told you about where we have the quotation marks, we have the punctuation going inside the quotation mark. A question mark or an exclamation point should be placed inside closing quotation marks when the question, the quotation itself is a question or an exclamation. Otherwise, it should be placed outside. If placed on the outside, no punctuation inside is required. So we have an example. What time will you be home from work, mom? Question mark asked Michael. The question mark wouldn't go at the end because asked Michael is not part of the question. So what time will you be home from work, mom? Question mark asked Michael. You wouldn't say asked Michael at the end because that's not that's not speaking. Asked Michael is just part of who is talking. It's not part of what is actually being said. Same thing for here. Who said all the world's a stage? So we are, this is part of the sentence now of the question. We have to put the question mark outside of it. So this is who said all the world's a stage. This is somebody speaking and they're quoting something. So since they're actually just quoting something, a question mark is going to go at the end. Stop, yelled the crossing patrol. Stop. Here we see our exclamation point is going to go within the quotation marks because yelled the crossing patrol, you'd be saying, stop, yelled the crossing patrol. And this part isn't being explained. This part is just talking about who is yelling. What a surprise to hear Susanna say we're moving back to Puerto Rico in July. So um, we're moving back to Puerto Rico in June outside of that, this is Susanna saying it. So somebody within this quote is saying it. So we see our exclamation point outside. Some hints for writing good dialogue. Start a new paragraph when you change speakers. Use other words for said. Avoid overusing speaker tags. Sometimes who is talking can be inferred from the rest of the text. Um, example, I already told you, I said glaring. Well, I wasn't listening, was I? He said. Apparently not, I replied. Now compare this to the following. I glared at him. I told you already. Well, I wasn't listening, was I? Apparently not. So um, sometimes who is talking can be inferred from the rest of the text. You can tell that if somebody's saying, they're having a conversation going back and forth the same way that you would if you were talking to someone. You can almost anticipate what they're going to say back to you. 
don't be afraid to use dialogue in your writing. So um, we have journal entries and we've been building up to doing this writing. So just be sure to use it thoughtfully, make every word um, a character says count. Um, don't use um, overuse your dialogue. It should be supplemental to the description and not to take over the whole composition. So in other words, in your writing, it shouldn't just be characters talking back and forth the entire time. Um, so be mindful of how much you're using it and make it count when you do use it. Okay, so let's do a couple of review questions here. So which sentence has the question, the quotation marks placed correctly? Carter's dad said, make sure you do your homework. I love trains, Liam explained, or Emma announced, I wish I could go to Disney World. So would it be this one where it's uh, a comma and then the question mark of what they said, the quotation marks of what they said, I love trains with that exclamation point outside, or Emma announced with a colon here. So it should be this uh, first one, Carter's dad said, make sure you do your homework. So Carter's dad saying it, there's a comma, and then what he actually says follows it. Make sure you do your homework. Which sentence has the quotation marks placed correctly? I'm not allowed to play video games, Olivia told them. So it's, I'm not allowed to play video games, just in quotes. I don't see a comma or period here. And then Olivia told them. Isabella whispered, we won't tell anyone. I don't see a period here, a comma, nothing to show that there'll be a second part. Or Ethan commented, comma, quotation mark, no one will know, period, ends of quotation mark. So the last one is the answer because we have our comma here. Ethan commented, signaling that Ethan is the one who's speaking. And then we have the phrase that he actually says, quote, no one will know. And if you note, know, we have this N here capitalized. No one will know, period, end of quotation marks. Which sentence has the quotation marks placed correctly? I am going to Chicago next week, comma, Maria said. I see one set of quotation marks here. B, have you ever been there before? These are in quotation marks with the question mark outside of the quotation mark, asked me. Or no, in quotes with a comma, admitted Maria, comma, quotation marks, but my mom has. So it should be that third one, no. So this is the phrase, it's not fully complete yet because she's still talking. So there's a quotation mark here. I'm sorry, there's a comma here and a quotation mark, admitted Maria, comma, but my mom has. Um, which sentence has the quotation marks? placed correctly. Meow, meow, the striped cat yelled. What on earth is all that noise, mom asked, or it's Tiger, replied Marcos. He's stuck in a tree. So it should be the last one. So if we look to our first one, we see meow, meow and quotes, but I don't see a comma or an end or a period or anything to show that this sentence is done or it's continuing. The striped cat yelled. What on earth is all that noise, comma, quotation mark, mom asked. Mom asked is not part of the question. So this question mark can't work. The question mark has to go when she's actually asking. So this is kind of like the direction. This isn't what is actually being asked. So it's Tiger, replied Marcos. He's stuck in a tree. So we see that his sentence is still going. He replied to it. And then he started a new sentence. He's stuck in a tree. Um, which sentence do you think the quotation marks are placed correctly? Wow, I didn't know you could flip like that, exclaimed Lily. Do you think I could join the circus, asked Ava. No, answered Lily, but you could get into the talent show. So if we look, wow, I didn't know you could flip like that, exclaimed Lily. So we see our quotes, our exclamation point, the sentence finishes within an exclamation point and then within the quotation marks, explains Lily. So she finished speaking, so this does not have to be capitalized. For this one, it's wrong because it says, do you think I could join the circus? The quote, the, I'm sorry, question mark is not within the quotation marks. So that can't be right. No, answered Lily, but you could get in the talent show. So this phrase, no, but you could get in, isn't finished, but it's completing, and I don't see a period or a comma after, so this can't be right either. 
So what you guys are going to do for your CYU4 today is your writing challenge. You're going to write your own dialogue. So you're going to pick one of these scenarios and you're going to add your own dialogue to it. So you're going to pick either a dialogue between a customer and a waiter or waitress in a restaurant. So, um, you know, it would be you or somebody and the person who's waiting on them to bring them food. What kind of dialogue or conversation or things would they be saying to each other in a restaurant? You can also pick a dialogue between a teacher and a student. So think about Ms. Antonucci, Ms. Bickle, myself, um, any of your other teachers. What would a dialogue between a teacher and a student be like? Maybe asking about their grade, maybe asking about homework, um, anything like that. What would the dialogue be like? Or you can pick a phone conversation between two friends about to meet. So they're making plans to meet. So you're going to pick one of those three scenarios. There should be dialogue between these two characters. And each character should say at least two things. Be sure to use proper quotation marks, commas, and grammar. So as you're working and you're making your own to fill into your CYU4, you can go back up. Um, to a PowerPoint, which is posted within your assignment as well. And you can look through kind of all the rules and the examples that we went through. So today you'll be answering some multiple choice questions about picking the best answer of each sentence that uses the quotation marks the right way. And then writing your own dialogue based on one of these three scenarios. So you're going to either pick a dialogue between a customer and a waiter and a restaurant, a dialogue between a teacher and a student, or a phone conversation between two friends who are about to make plans to meet. So you're going to pick one of those, and then you're going to write me some dialogue happening between the two of them. Each character should be saying at least two things. Have a great day.